Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the verification of our seasonal forecasting work last year. I don't know whether you guys were here last year, but at um, last year's crop updates I gave a bit of a, a preview on our statistical seasonal forecasting system that we developed. Um, the system went live. Oops. System went live in April. So in April last year we put the um, website up and running. You could look at the website, see what the forecasts were for the coming months in the growing season, and also click on to the different links in the website to look at more um, close-up forecasts for individual sites. Um, what I'm going to do today is just answer the question, how did we go last year, before I give you the forecast for next year. So the, this is the website up here on the um, board. Uh, I'll pop that up again later at the end of the talk, but um, please have a look if you haven't had a look already and see um, what you think. One thing I'll note is that forecast skill varies at different times of year. So the forecast that we make now using the latest data, it's monthly data, so that's January data, um, are not going to be as accurate as forecasts that we make closer to the growing season. Okay, so looking at the, looking at the forecast that we made in April last year, uh, the forecast for the May, June, July period was really for a drier than normal, so drier than normal three month outlook. So in this particular map, the brown colours are showing higher probabilities of drier than normal conditions, and the more brown it is, the higher those probabilities are. Um, what I've got next to that map is the, the skill map, and that's showing you an idea of um, how accurate we would expect these models to be based on historical data. So if we looked at making forecasts for the years we've had in the past, from 1950 to 2009, in this case, for last year, um, how, how many times would we have got it right? What are the percentage of times that we would get um, a forecast of a weather than average or a dry than average year correct? And what that's showing us is that the, the red colours are all um, areas where we would have been correct 60% of the time. So we can have some reasonable confidence in that forecast. Now what actually happened was we had a slightly drier than average season in some of the southwest, but large areas were just average. So the white colours here are showing an average season. So um, it's well within the range of the probabilities that we're looking at. I'd say that's not too bad. If we look at the June, July, August forecast made at the same time, we were forecasting um, higher probabilities of a drier than average season, particularly in the northwest, average over a good part of the state, and then some sort of areas where it was expected to be slightly wetter than normal down in the south. Again, we had reasonable skill for most of the southwest, and here again we got average to dry conditions over that three month period. When we look at the July, August, September forecast, what we found was, although we had reasonably, reasonably good skill, we were forecasting a wetter September than average. And that, that, that affected this three month forecast. And that didn't happen. We actually had fairly average conditions over the southwest for that period. When we jump through to the next, to the next um, forecast, August, September, October, um, you'll see that, that that wet spring that we were forecasting did actually come in the end, but it didn't come in September, it came in October. Another way of looking at the forecast and how well they went is to look at individual sites. So one of the, the nice things about this forecasting system is that you can zoom in and have a closer look at particular locations. Um, in this case, it's grid cells that are 50 metres, approximately by 50 metres. So um, I've just got three sites, one's in the northern ag region, one's in the central and one's on the south coast. Um, and in Minginu, this plot here, its forecast was made using data up to and including April. So we've got actual rainfall shown in black, the most likely amount forecast in the dark blue, and these error bands that are around it, are the, it's a region where you'd expect 80% um, of the time that your rainfall would fall within those ranges. So 10% of the time you might actually get something lower than that forecast, and 10% you might get something higher, but you know, mostly you'd expect it to fall within that range. So here we are expecting a wet of an average annual to date season for Mingyu. When we got to June, we'd started to get reasonably good rainfall through that area and the forecast was a bit higher, so we were expecting um, more chance of a wetter than average season from Mingyu. Once we got up to September, 
you can see that we actually ended up fairly close to where we were forecasting in the first place. And of course, as we get to that end, our error bars are much smaller. So um, that's not too bad a forecast for the area. In Narragin again, this forecast is made in April. We were forecasting overall a drier than normal season, but not too much more drier than the average. Once we got to June, we were starting to look like more of an average season for that location. And then in the end, we got sort of slightly drier than average. So what we're seeing here is that the forecasts we made in April were actually better than the forecasts that we made in June, in a way. Um, and that, that can be because of the different accuracies that you get forecasting at different times of the year. Um, in salmon gums, in April, we were forecasting close to average season. As the season progressed, the forecast became lower. And unfortunately for salmon gums, as the season kept going, that, that later forecast was more accurate in the end. So I'm not going to go through these for a million sites, that's enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, another way of looking at the um, error in the forecast, or the accuracy of the forecast, is looking at the spatial variation in that error. So here I've actually put up the monthly absolute error for different months of the season when the forecasts were made in April. And what you've got here is a scale which you can't read, is in 50 mil increments. Um, red areas actually got more rainfall than what we were forecasting and green areas got less rainfall than what we were forecasting. Now for most of the months the rainfall was within plus or minus 50 mils of what, what was forecast. But of course that um, doesn't necessarily indicate that the forecast was good because if you've got a month where your average rainfall is fairly low then that can be quite a large error. So we'll be looking into that a little bit more. Um, but before I go on and show you the 2012 forecast, um, outlooks, I, I just say that what we have here is one year of an operational system and in general that's not going to give us a very good indication of how well it will perform in the future. So when, when we publish these outlooks we always publish um, skill information which we think is a better indication of what might happen in the future. So the map earlier I showed you with the red colours, where I said red was 60% accuracy, that's actually about as good as it's going to get. So even if we get it very accurate in one year, it could be way down the next year, but on average it will be around 60%. So you always have to take into account the fact that these forecasts are not absolutes. No matter how well we do in any particular year, they could be less accurate in the following year. So February, March, April of 2012, the blue colours here are showing you areas where the probability of a wetter than average season is higher. And the darker the blue, the more likely it is to be wetter than average. So um, really we're, we're forecasting here that we would expect the next couple of months to be a bit wetter than normal. Um, the percent consistent skill here is slightly different to what we had last year. What you, you see less red areas and more pink areas. The reason for that is that we've modified the um, statistical forecasting system to produce maps that look more smooth. So we've actually modified the, to put a spatial, a spatial operation into the system so that we don't end up with um, large variations in the forecast from one grid cell to the other, which was one of the major criticisms with last year's system. So here you've got good skill over large parts of the southwest. The pink areas show that you've got more skill in climatology, but not necessarily great skills. So really when you're looking at this sort of thing, you need to take that into account. And if you look at the website, you would definitely want to click on the grid cell that you're interested in and have a closer look at the forecast. Moving on to May, June, July, um, we've got um, more blue colours, which means that we're still forecasting higher probabilities of a wetter than normal season right the way through May, June, July. And the skill here is slightly higher, mainly because we've got better skill at forecasting May and June conditions than we do for the earlier summer months. After I finish here, David's going to talk to you about why we're getting this sort of forecast, what the indicators are that are driving the forecast, so um, he can explain to you how we're getting to this point. But I'll just put up the last one, August or September, October, which is still showing a kind of average to wetter than average conditions for the southwest, but now the skill is really not, it's quite low. So um, what's going to happen next spring, we can't really tell at the moment. We can't say with any real sure, surety that that will happen. So um, the best thing to do is, as the season progresses, to keep an eye on the forecasts. Um, they're updated every month in the first week of the month, so you can just 
have a look at the forecast as they go, and as we approach the season in general, the skill gets better. Um, and I'll pass you on to David.